Hey guys, Jared Wesley here of Live Traders, and it is that time of the week. It is lecture time. This week's lecture, guys, is a two-fold topic. The first, oh, 30 minutes or so of the lecture, uh, I talk a lot about risk control, money management, and how serious this business really is. And I'm gonna show you some, I hate doing it, but I'm gonna show you some what I would call horror stories, or people that are just not using their brain or not using good money management. And one of the problems out there, guys, is there's a lot of places that'll say, hey, you know, come over to this place or come over to that place. You know, we teach risk control. And then you go over there and they're risking 50% of their account on a trade or 80% of their account on a trade. That is not risk control. So there's two facets to this. One is people come in with expectations that they have no basis for. They just have a preconceived notion of what this business is. And then unfortunately, Google tends to confirm those notions. The problem is it's just not true. You're not going to get rich your first year. In fact, if you break even in your first year, if you're break even after 12 months, you are a successful trader. You have done a good job. Most traders don't make money until year two, sometimes even year three. So if that turns you off, I'm sorry, then this isn't the business for you. If that turns you off, then live traders isn't for you. Go to one of the furus out there that will promise you riches in 30 days. That's not how it actually works in the market. And that's what I talk about in this video. Why the world thinks that you guys are gamblers why the world has such a negative low opinion of this industry of traders because you guys give them the fodder you're giving them the ammunition because you're doing things that are not conducive to success they're not conducive to making money so i talk a lot about that today the first 30 minutes is all about how you need to control risk what could potentially happen if you don't talking about psychology and behavioral patterns and how you can go about your trading using your positives and negatives because let's not kid ourselves guys we are not perfect okay we have things we're good at and we have things we're not good at we have core personality beliefs and traits and those things can be a, a big hindrance to trading success at times as you guys can see for example i am very direct i'm very opinionated that's a behavioral personality core trait that's not something i go and it switches like a light switch overnight. It doesn't work that way. You guys have the same thing. For example, maybe you're a shy person. If I put you in front of a room full of people and say, hey, speak in front of 5,000 people, you might have a problem with that because you're a shy person, right? Well, you need to figure out a way to trade within your given personality. Sure, we need to grow and get better, but we all have a core personality, a core belief system that we need to trade within. And many of you, the problem is you are in denial, right? You know, you know those dab the steps for alcoholics. The first one's denial. The second one is acceptance. You need to get past those two. First one's denial, then accept who you are and then trade within who you are. Okay, the second half of the lecture, I talk about trade management, specifically managing on pivots, pivot management. Many of you out there think that um, the only thing I teach or the only thing I trade is two R all or nothing or break even at one R with two R targets. No, there's a million ways that you can manage a trade, guys, from moving averages to add and reduce to all or nothing to pivots to bar by bar to time stops, etc. There's a million ways you can manage. And given that there's a million different personalities out there, you need to find one of those different management strategies that's conducive to your personality style, your time constraints. So I talk a little bit about that as well, okay? So again, it's a helpful video because in my opinion, it's one of the most eye-opening videos that I've done in a while. I'm showing you some real emails that I've gotten from people, some real comments that I've seen online from people. And you know what? To be quite frank, it's quite sobering. It's unbelievably sobering to see what people are doing. And you'll see a couple examples where people are completely just blowing up their entire 401ks and IRAs. Why? Stupidity. Why? Because they're listening to what they see on Google out there. Guys, they're not there to help you, man. They're there to get you to swipe that card and make a couple shekels off you and they don't care after that. I'm telling you this business is tough and you will not make it unless you have proper trade and money management. All right, so let's get to it, guys. 
14 day trial is one dollar you get a 14 day trial to the live traders chat room for one dollar also if you like these videos please click the like button and also come on you gotta subscribe right it's good content on this channel i'm jared wesley let's get to it All right, so don't be fooled too much um, about the title. It says, get serious or give up. So that's today's lecture topic, get serious or give up, the importance of controlling risk. So today's topic is twofold. Most of my lectures are twofold. So we're gonna begin the lecture talking a little bit about um, the importance of money management controlling risk, but in a little bit of a different way than I normally have um, before. Because I've talked about money management several times in the past, but I have a little different spin uh, maybe more in the psychology angle today. And then we're going to talk a little bit about management, trade management, um, specifically bar by bar management, understanding what makes you guys tick uh, personality styles. Um, all right. So today's lecture will be slightly shorter than normal just because I have uh, some appointments I have to get to. All right. So let's dig in. And without further ado, so a couple weeks back, I put a slide up like this, right? I think you guys probably remember this slide. And it says, hey, you know, what my family thinks I do, what I think I do, right? A little Gordon Gecko action. What society and friends think I do, what I actually do. I've changed this out a little bit today. And what I've changed on this is what I actually do. Because if we're being completely honest and blunt, which you need to be in this business to be successful, this is what most of you should be saying is what I actually do because this is what most of you actually do. Let's just let's just call it what it is because if you cannot admit it, if you cannot, okay? If you can't admit to yourself that this is what you're doing, you will never change, right? You know, they always say like for those people overcoming addiction, the first step in the process is what? Acceptance. Accepting what you really are because the first step is denial, right? That you know that whole dab the thing right? Denial is the first step. Okay. Acceptance is the second step. All right. So denial is the first steps. Acceptance is that you guys, most of you are still in the denial phase. Okay. You're in the denial phase. You are a gambler. Just put your hand up. You know, they do AA meetings. Hi, my name is John and I'm an alcoholic. You just put your hand up and say, hi, my name is John and I'm a gambler. I think I'm a trader, but I'm really a gambler. Because until you accept it, you'll never overcome it. And guys, this is what the world thinks of you. Two of these quotes, two of these four quotes are from people you would know. One, you would know and really highly respect, highly respect, okay? Somebody you'd see on TV that has a bank account that's really, really fat. And the other person also has a pretty fat bank account, okay? But this is what people think about the trading industry. Day trading is predicated on a fundamental misconception about the nature of stock prices, namely that they are somehow persistent and predictable. In order to succeed as a day trader over time, you have to be one thing, incredibly lucky, okay? The fact is over the short term, a day, a week, a month, even a year, stock movements are random, but over the long run, stock prices tend to reflect the earnings power of the underlying business. If you are not among, wait for it, that incredibly lucky, that 1% of incredibly lucky traders, don't worry, your odds of stock market success are actually quite good, blah, 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 blah. Okay, all right. Next, so it's obvious, all right? It is obvious you have practically no chance of beating the market by trading. The probability of you succeeding in this to the extent of achieving the apparently modest goal of beating a lazy index fund, which is what, eight to 10% a year? After taxes, virtually nil. Most of the research results will show that a staggering 70-90% of traders lose money. These kinds of statistics are almost equivalent to the ones that measure the number of people who lose money when gambling. So is it fair to say that day trading is like gambling? And this is why this one is last. Is it fair to say that? And yes, it is. Okay. It's fair to say that because most of you are that. You just don't want to admit it. The things you do, the actions that you do. And, and remember, I'm not just talking about 
not taking a stop loss or letting a loser grow a little bigger than it should. I'm not just talking about that. I'm talking about your preparation, how you enter this business with this get rich mentality, how you enter this business overhyped, undercapitalized, and with expectations that grossly exceed your experience level. All of it makes you a gambler. It's all of those things. It's not just the simple thing. All of you guys right now are thinking, oh, well, you know, if I don't take my stop loss, I'm a gambler. No, it's everything else as well. Okay, it's the seriousness in which you approach this business with. Okay, it's all of those things. And these people, as much as you read that and go, F you, I can't, yeah, that's not true. You are those people. You are, okay? So I have no problem with people saying these things about the trading business because they're right. For most traders, they are right, okay? They're correct. So how could you be upset about it, right? How could you be upset about it? So what's the real deal then, right? Well, this is the real deal. We have a lot of traders that ultimately become technically proficient, but they're not profitable. So technically proficient traders are a dime a dozen, but truly profitable traders are few and far between. Why? Terrible money management. Guys, reading a chart, my, my daughter turned seven today. She can read a chart. Red and green are pretty easy to figure out, okay? Bottoming tails, pullbacks, breakouts, three bar plays, climactics, they're pretty, actually pretty stinking easy to figure out. What isn't your mentality, your personality, your emotions, your lack of discipline, your terrible money management? But reading a chart, if I put up, and I'm not gonna do it today, I was going to, but if I put up like five really nice charts, I bet my bottom dollar, nine out of 10 of you could recognize that that's a really nice chart. So what's the rub then? Why are there so many proficient traders and so few genuinely profitable ones? Well, for several reasons. Most of you just want to focus on the easy stuff, right? You just want to look at charts all day. And I told you guys this before. Anytime I do a lecture on psychology or I do chart slides, the views are way down. But if I do a chart lecture where we're looking at charts all day long, oh my gosh, you get a gazillion views. You guys are misguided. You're just completely and utterly misguided. You don't want to put in the hard work. Guys, the hard work for me is defined as the stuff you're not good at and don't really want to do. That's the hard work. Let me repeat, the stuff you're not that good at and don't really want to do, right? Think about it. I always use the golf analogy, you know? no, Everybody goes to the driving range, they want to hit their driver, right? They don't want to practice sand wedge shots. How many times, when's the last of you that, and you don't, it's rhetorical, that you went to a golf practice range and you got a bucket of 100 balls and you spent 90 of the 100 balls in the sand trap or putting? No, you, you're there for an hour and you spend 45 minutes of it doing what? Hitting your irons, hitting your driver, but not on your wedge, not on your short game, not on your putting. That's trading. You don't focus on what is important, which is between the ears. So actions speak louder than words, and most people's actions suggest they'd rather look at charts than fix the real problem. It's just that simple, okay? The results don't lie, and I'm going to show you some, some pretty ugly things in a couple minutes, okay? Yeah, somebody made the comment that day trading is putting and chipping. It is. It absolutely is. Guys, this business is 99% psychological. I'll leave 1% for the charts, okay? You could argue it's 100% psychological, but we'll leave 1% for the charts. Managing your personality and having the proper mindset is extremely, extremely important, okay? Everything comes back to your beliefs, okay? Because of those beliefs, they help determine your actions. So who are you listening to and why? Are you listening to yourself who makes mistakes all the time and lies to themselves all the time? Are you listening to other people like myself that are just slapping you across the face silly and say you're doing it wrong? And then after you've heard that, are you actually listening to that? If you hear it, but, but are you listening to it? Are you taking that advice and making yourself a better trader because of it? So you gotta ask yourself, what type of personality do you have? Are you patient? Are you jittery? Are you calm? Are you nervous? Are you tense? And guys, this stuff comes down to a lot of factors. Factors you don't necessarily think of. I'll give you a, a terrible way to get into the trading business. I just got fired from my job. I have a wife, two kids. I got to pay the bills. I want to be a trader. So you pull 20, 30, 40 grand out of your 401k or wherever, out of your savings account, wherever, and you decide I want to be a trader. 
And then you come along, I slap you silly and say, it's going to take you one, two, maybe three years, two to three years to be good at this. You go, I don't have that kind of time, Jared. I'm sorry. This has to work in the next three to six months. You don't understand. You don't understand. I got to pay the bills. No, you don't understand. You don't understand that this isn't a light switch. You will work at this. Okay. Imagine for a moment, this is the best analogy I can give you. Imagine something that you struggle with. For example, I am extremely opinionated. Okay. If you haven't noticed extremely, it's pretty tough for me to hold back my opinions. So I want you to think of something that you're not good at, that you struggle with personality wise. And then I want you to just fix it tomorrow. You can't do it. Can you? You can't do it. Pick one thing. Let's say, for example, you're a shy person. You're a very shy, meek person. I'm going to put you on stage in front of 5,000 people. Oh my gosh. Is the, tell me when the anxiety stops. You're sweating now. You know, your palms, your, your, you know, your pits, all that stuff's getting nasty because that's not you. But guess what you're trying to be? You're trying to be a traitor with a meek personality in front of a room of 5,000 people. You understand where I'm going with this? You are going against your core personality. And it's very, very difficult to do that. So you have to understand how you come into this business. Many people failed before they've ever started. Okay. So are you a fear-based trader full of doubt? Are you overly confident? Some of you are way too confident. You take way too many trades. Some of you aren't confident enough and you can't push the button. You need to figure out where you fall in that range so that you can help make it better. Understanding yourself, as it says, is the key to success. So it's your attitudes, beliefs, and discipline that yield results. So what does your attitude, beliefs, and discipline suggest about you? Here's the problem. Most of you, one, are lying to yourselves, and two, are not even tracking this stuff. You're not taking a tracking spreadsheet, so you don't know the empirical data, how much you've made or lost. Many of you are not journaling your trades, so you don't know one, not, not only was it a good trade, but what your mindset was in the middle of the trade. Record yourself while you're trading, okay? Record yourself while you're trading, okay? So here's the other thing, guys. If trading isn't gambling, why do so many people say it is? If trading isn't gambling, why do so many people fail, all right? If trading is gambling, then why can some people be so consistent? You gotta ask yourself that because it goes back to all of this. You lie to yourself. That's why the world thinks you're a gambler. Because you are. Because you can't be honest enough with yourself to recognize what the real problem is. And the real problem is you. And it's not just you, it's the real you. And I've said this a million times, you guys have heard it before. The person who's waiting for line in, in line at Starbucks or at Disneyland is not the same person who's in front of the computer right now trading. You're different people, okay? You don't think you are, but you are. And all you need to do is trade for about a month to figure that one out, all right? But the problem I think people have is they go, oh, I'll be better tomorrow, I'll be better tomorrow. When they realize they're missing the core issue, who are you? And until you figure out who you are, you won't be better tomorrow because I am not going to magically stop being overly critical tomorrow. It's not going to happen. I'm not going to stop. Maybe if you give me six months or a year to really work on it and put me in the perfect situation to not be overly critical, I might be okay at that. You have to figure out that for trading. So at the end of the day, trading is not gambling. It's not true trading. Real trading is not gambling. But most traders trade like gamblers. Scared money doesn't make money. What is your edge? This is the area most of you haven't figured out. Because you're so focused on something that doesn't work for you, but you're telling yourself, you'll figure it out. I'll figure it out. Next week, it'll be different. Guys, I did that for the first 6 to 12 months I traded. I'm not kidding. I would come in. I would find a good pattern. I would get in the good pattern and I would sell it too soon. Get in the good pattern, sell it too soon. Get in the good pattern. And then I would say to myself, you'll be better tomorrow, Jared. Don't worry about it. And then on Friday, you go back and review your trades. 
Don't worry about it. I'm going to go for a hike this weekend. I'm going to do some little bit of meditation, maybe catch a yoga class and Monday morning. Who boy, who man markets watch out. Cause here I come Monday because you know, I reviewed last week's trades. I realized what I did wrong. I sold too soon. But this weekend, I'm doing some mental exercises. And Monday morning, man, phew, I'm going to be on fire. Monday morning comes around. It's about 9.37, seven minutes into the day. You just got out of the, your next trade too soon. Watch it ran for another $2. And you just got out of it too soon. Well, what the hell did you do all weekend? I thought you were going to go to yoga. I thought you went hiking. I thought you readjusted. You did. You did all of those things. But what you didn't realize is real change happens slowly. So now what? Where does that leave me? Well, maybe your management approach right now is not conducive to your personality style right now. So instead of shooting for those bigger targets, maybe shoot for a smaller target that you can actually reach even if it makes less money. Let me repeat it because it's an important, it's an aha moment, okay? Maybe you should lower your targets to an area that you can actually hold to until you've shown you can do it, even if it makes you less money for a month or two. And then instead of say 2R, you're shooting for 1R. Then you're going to shoot for 1.2R, then 1.5R, then 1.7. And that process might take you a year or two, but that's the process you're going to take. That's one example of how you correct these problems. You have to find out what your edge is, what you're good at, what you're bad at, because most of you are just average traders. Average traders do a lot of things wrong, okay? You gotta understand, at the end of the day, that's all this business is. It's a game of statistical probability. That is it. I know you guys think your shit doesn't stink, and I do too from time to time. You think, wow, we're so great. Look at this three-bar play. Guys, just as many three-bar plays fail as they, as they work. 50-50. And you're going, well, what's your edge? Our edge is our management on top of it. So you have your three bar play, which gives us a very small edge. And then our management getting two to one is the big edge. Because that means all we have to do is make two when we win and lose one when we lose. Well, now I don't have to be very good to make money, do I? I got to be what? 30%, 35% batting average just to break even. That's not bad. If anything above that, I make money. That's all the business is. Statistical probability. Okay. It's nothing more. It's nothing less. The sooner you get that into your head, the sooner you'll make a profit. Okay. It's not about always finding the perfect chart. It's far more about being consistent. Now it's nice when you're consistently finding great charts, but being consistent across the board, especially with trade and money management is the path to success. And that consistency, because if you're not consistent, it's not really measurable, or at least the measurement's not meaningful. Right? By being consistent, you can determine your expectancy, which gives you your edge. But I know you guys are getting, I know you guys are getting tired. So let's do a little sexy chart break. All right. I did this a couple weeks back. You guys, you know, I'm losing, you're losing focus on me. All right. Whoo, whoo, man. And this is a good one. I'm not going to lie. This is a good one. What do we have? Multiple time frame analysis here. We have a daily breakout over 46 inside of a three bar play, or I should say we have a three bar play inside of a daily breakout. So we always start with the, the higher time frame. Higher time frame breaking out over 46, our goal is to find an entry. Could you have swing trade this 46 by 44? Sure, but in this case, we needed to break 46. It breaks 46, what do we get? Wide bar, narrow bar, right around 46.21, okay? <whistles> Look at this, 12 cent stop loss, rip, pull back, rip. Wow, this is a great trade. Okay, this is a really, really good trade. Made four grand on this trade. Okay, not bad. Taking $500 risk and making four grand is about eight to one. Okay, not bad. All right. It starts with the daily. Drill down to the lower time frame. Wait for your pitch. When you see your pitch, swing that bat. Sometimes you'll strike out and a lot of times the ball goes out of the park. Okay, all right. Back to... The important stuff, okay? So this is when trading is gambling. It's gambling when it's an occupation of desperation. It's gambling when you don't get an education because, well, you'll get one later after. I, I love that. I get about five emails a day on that one. Jared, 
I'm going to go take the course uh, in a couple months after I make some money trading. So when I build my account from 5,000 to 10,000, you know, 100% gain, then I'm going to get an education. Uh, okay, everything else in life has done the opposite, but you know, you're special. So I'm going to operate, you know, do some brain surgery on you, Jared, but I'm going to go to medical school after I'm done. Okay, that's cool. Do what you think is right for your trading business. I'm not here to tell you to take the course. Do what you think's right, okay? Next, you don't treat it like a business. You just don't. You really don't. If you had a boss, he would have fired you. She would have fired you five or 10 times over by now. You know that that's true. You don't use a viable method. You're hacking around from chat room to chat room, from company to company, blah, 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 this and blah, 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 that never ending cycle, okay? Never ending cycle. You don't have a trading plan, which goes back to you're not treating it like a business. You don't have any rules. You sell too soon. You become desperate to recoup your losses. You overtrade. You don't take stops. You give back profits. You don't have profit targets. You don't have loss limits. You don't have any of that crap. You're just hacking away. And we're about to see some of that in a second. You think I'm kidding. If you have a plan, you don't follow your plan. Okay? You don't give yourself adequate time to learn. It takes two to three years to get good at this. Sorry, go somewhere else if you think you're going to do it in three to six months. Live Traders is not the place for you. Go somewhere else. Let them tell you that you're going to get rich in three months and you're going to turn 27 into a million. Let them tell you because it ain't coming from me. Okay? You're not objective and you let your ego trade for you. That does all these things. Get out too soon, desperate to recoup losses, over trade, you know, that kind of stuff. And you expect way too much too soon. Way too much too soon. Okay. Trading's gambling when you lack discipline, when you do all of these things. I'm going to guess that many of you listening have done most of these things, if not all of these things, you've done most of them. So how can you call yourself a trader? How can you call yourself a trader when you do all of those things? Okay. Trading isn't gambling when you prepare properly, wait for it before you open your trading business. You don't just drive down the road and go, oh, that's kind of a neat spot for a restaurant. I think I'll put a restaurant there. No, you do a lot of planning, right? Trading, you do planning before you come in, okay? I get it. You're, you're watching all these Google ads and you're hyped up and all. You still have to check yourself, okay? Trading isn't gambling when you have realistic expectations based on the real advice and experience of others you trust. You have a clearly defined set of rules. You rarely, if ever, break those rules. You know when to sit on hands, S-O-H. Sit on hands or quit for the day, week, or the month. How many of you honestly can say you do that? Honestly. How many can you honestly say that you're really good at quitting, whether it's profit target or a loss limit? I've seen it all the time. People keep trading. They're down 5R for the month, 10R for the month. They keep trading. They're up 7R. And then they go back to break even or, or plus a little bit, okay? Trading isn't gambling when you find a great opportunity and you don't hesitate to act on it. You stay true to your trading plan regardless of your emotion. You are 100% objective and don't let your ego make decisions for you. Basically, trading isn't gambling when you're consistent and honest in your approach, okay? Now, we're going to get to some interesting things here. Somebody sent me some of these, a couple that are from me. Somebody sent some of these to me as well. You guys have seen this slide before, okay? I'm not even going to review it. You've seen it like five times, all right? This isn't trading. This is gambling. Read it on your own time. I've got some new material for you now. So in case you guys think that all of these people, wait for it, in case you think these people were wrong, these people have no idea what they're talking about, you know, the rest of the world telling you that, Day trading is gambling and that if you make money, you're just lucky, you know, all that stuff. And Kate, I just, I'm, just in case you thought these people were not being very nice. How about this stuff? Okay. 15% loss in one day. 17.4% loss this week. 94% loss this month. 18% this week. How do you call yourself a trader? I was going to use a really bad word there, okay? How do you call yourself a trader when you look like this, when you do this? Look at this. This person lost $25,000. That was 94% of their account this past month. How does that happen? Wait for it. You're a gambler. 
okay? You need Traders Anonymous. You really do, okay? Just think you can cherry pick four of them. Uh, here's a couple more. Oh, look, only minus 57% this week. That's a pretty good week. Oh, 98% this week. I mean, I'm not laughing, but I'm laughing. This is ridiculous. I will get rich or die trying. Good for you. Okay, one of those two things is going to happen probably. Okay, are you kidding me? This is what a lot of people do. This is what a lot of people do. Okay, now, here's another one. Okay, I darkened out the name. This is on the left and this is a, a you know, a text thread on the right hand side. It's cut in half here. So this person's down 18%. And it goes, should I take my loss or keep holding? Opinions, please. Wrong question. Okay, wrong question. All right. The question should be, should I get out or just flat quit trading? All right, that's the question. Let's go down. 21 more comments. Hold, but don't expect to make gains just to lower your losses. Blind leading the blind. This is somebody's comment. Oh, yeah, you should hold. But don't expect to make gains. You know, just expect to lower your loss. Are you freaking kidding me? This is the advice that these people are getting from other people? And I'm getting that this was probably a serious comment from somebody. Guess I'm stuck. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, you're stuck now. Day trade restriction. That's what that says if you can't see it. It says day trade restriction. Okay. <laughs> Should have used a stop loss. At least one person has a brain, right? This is incredible. At least one person deserves some, some, you know, some credit for trying to help. Okay. But my gosh, this is the garbage that is out there. Yes, this is the garbage that's out there. Okay, guys, I saw somebody's advertisement, a competitor's advertisement a couple weeks back. All right. And it was on Instagram. I'm not going to say who it was. But it was on Instagram and it was to the effect, I'm paraphrasing, it was to the effect of, are you tired of all the furus out there? You should come to blah, blah, blah trading company, okay? Where risk management is our number one priority. Hmm, interesting. Then this person was risking 70% of their account on the trade they took Monday morning in the chat room. Hmm, interesting. How does that work? How does that work? Jure, I won't I won't agree or disagree with you. I'll just say you 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 have a very good sniffer for sniffing out, you know, what is what in this world. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. G wagons are incredible. Okay? So yeah, let me go risk 80% of my account on one trade, but I'm gonna sell you in my advertising. Risk control is our number one priority. Oh my goodness gracious. It's ridiculous, man. It's ridiculous. Let me teach you how to turn 500 into a million again. But I'm going to risk 90% of my account on every trade. And if you, if you don't think it's real, this is real stuff from people. Okay? I commend them for posting it because I'd go hide in the corner if I was this stupid. Okay? But none of these people take this week's prize for idiot of the week. Okay? And I know you guys think I'm being mean by saying those things. I know you think I'm being mean. But I'm trying to give you guys the reality of what happens to so many people in this business. So that what? So that it won't happen to you. I'm trying to beat this horse till it's so dead so that it won't happen to you. Okay? Because this business is no joke, man. The market will slice your throat and keep walking and not even look back. All right? And this is the email that I showed the chat room the other day. Hey, Jared, I tried day trading for three months now, but I guess it doesn't suit me. I've lost over 100,000. I do accept the fault being a FOMO. I said, this is my comments, if you can't control risk, then no, it's a terrible idea. How in the world did you lose 100K in three months? That's just straight up gambling. These are my real comments to people. I type this to people all the time. You need to have some level of control 
to be successful in trading, swing, core, or otherwise. If I were you, I would take whatever money you have left and put it in a Vanguard 500 mutual fund or a total market fund and let it go and don't touch it for 20 or 30 years. That was my advice to this person, okay? Because they still had like 70 or 80 grand left. That was on February 17th. And on February 29th, 12 days later, this happens. This will be my last mail to you. I should have really listened to your advice and put the remainder of money somewhere else. But I tried day trading again on the Dow 30 with 200 to 1 leverage. My net worth is zero now. I feel suicidal. I've got three kids and my wife doesn't know about it. Okay? Total loss stands at 170 thousand dollars which is my whole life savings do you guys think this is funny now do you guys think this is still a joke i should hope not because this person just lost 170 grand and they don't have millions of dollars by their own account that's all the money they have now again do you really think this is a joke it's not funny Take your 401k and just destroy it, burn it. Do you think you'd be laughing if somebody did that to your 401k or worse yet, if you did it? No. So when you see this stuff, sure, we have a laugh. Wow, look at this idiot, lost 94%. But this isn't funny, okay? And the problem is you guys are listening to the advertisements out there. Oh, risk control is our number one job. And the first thing they do is risk 80% of their account on the next trade. It's not funny, okay? So yes, most traders are gamblers. These people are right in what they say because most of you act like idiots. Stop it or quit trading. So you wanna go back to the title? Get serious or give up? Get serious or give up because this will be you. And it might only be five grand. Maybe it's only 10 grand. Maybe it's not 170. I personally know somebody that's lost $800,000. It took 1.5 million down to 700 and some grand. It happens to people. You control risk, guys, by knowing your entry, stop, and target before you get in. I'm not even going to lecture you on this because I got to cut this short in the next five or 10 minutes. And I want to talk about one other thing before we do that. I just wanted you guys to see this about how serious it really is out there that this isn't a joke. It's happening to thousands of people every day. And one of the biggest problems is the internet. You're coming in because of things you've seen online, people you've listened to or heard online because you think, quote, think they're a guru or making money. They're not. They're making their money off the courses they're selling you. And they're trying to get you to trade with a $1,000 account when they do it damn well. You don't have a chance with a $1,000 account. Why? Because you'll buy a course from them maybe. Be smart. Use money management. Okay. Now, I was going to show you some other really beautiful charts, but I don't have time for that. <laughs> um, all right. Where'd I go here? Ah, so guys, I want to talk a little bit about pivot management for a second. All right. And you're going, whoa, total left turn. Yes, it is a left turn. Okay. I want to talk a little bit about pivot management because a lot of you guys out there, you have this this preconceived notion that I am not supportive of bar by bar management or pivot management, that the only thing I think is viable is like 2R all or nothing or 2R targets. That is just completely not true. It's untrue. And anyone who's taken professional trading strategies knows that is untrue because the management chapter has at least 10 different ways you can manage trades. So I thought today I would go over pivot management, okay? Because I think it's very important to understand that there are many, many, many ways that you can manage trades. And if we're talking about management strategies that are conducive to personality styles, you might have to try two or three or four different management strategies before you find one that fits you, that suits you. Okay. All right. Um, so let's talk today about one of those 10 management strategies, pivot management strategies. Now I am under of, of the belief that Pivot management's combined with add and reduce is probably the most profitable management strategy you can try. Now, I, I hesitate to make that comment simply because why? Soon as people hear the words most profitable, they immediately jump on the bandwagon. No, 
If this is not conducive to your personality, please don't stay with it. Try it. Try it for a month. See how it goes. It's not for me because one, it takes me sitting in front of my desk for at least three or four more hours. And two, I don't have the patience for that. So here's a beautiful breakdown, right? 2050 would be the entry. 2075 would be the stop loss. It immediately drops. And I'll be honest with you. I would have been out at $20. That's two to one. But you can also see a lot of money would have been left on the table. By the way, guys, that guild 84% rules coming close. All right. A lot of money would have been left on the table. So it drops, consolidates, drops, bounces, drops, bounces, drops, and then puts in a double bottom. And then this pivot here. So when you're talking about pivot management, the problem that most traders have, in my opinion, is they don't put their stop at an honest pivot. And here's one of the problems. You think, for example, let's use this pivot right here. Let's use this pivot right here. You guys think that the second this red bar forms, you lower your stop. No, you don't. You don't. You lower your stop to this pivot right here where the red line is when you get about 80 to 90% to the prior pivot low. I'm going to repeat this because some of you missed that. You will not. Let's say your stop loss is here at $20. You lowered your stop to 20. The stock drops. It bounces. When this red bar finishes right here, this red bar right here, do not lower your stop to here. It's too soon because this pivot has not actually formed yet. All that formed was one red bar. You can lower your stop only when it gets back to the prior pivot low, 90% to the prior pivot low, then you can lower your stop. So the stock drops again, bounces, but again, you do not lower your stop until this area right here. See where this bottoming tail starts to form? You're about what? 90% of that pivot low. Once this bar forms here, then you can lower your stop to here, okay? Notice it comes back up, goes back down. You can't lower the stop until you get down to this area. When you get down here, then you can lower. So the problem that most traders have is they lower their stop loss too soon. On a long play, they raise their stop loss too soon. And that's where they mess up pivot management. You have to let the pivot actually form, which means getting near or at the prior pivot low. Here's one more example and we'll wrap this up. Here's a long play. So you get in on the breakout. It immediately pops. I would have been gone. All right. Then it goes higher, pulls back. In this case, you're in this for a long time. Right, You're in this for a long time before you can raise your stop. So remember, this thing rips, can't touch your stop. It rips again, can't touch your stop. Guys, this is why I have a challenge with pivot management. Because in this particular scenario, this stock went from $86 to what, $86.70? So you're up 70 cents on a 16 cent stop loss. That's what, about five to one, four and a half to one. And you have not raised your stop yet. I have a very challenging time with that. See, to do pivot management, you can get huge targets, but there are times you also give back huge gains because you have to let the stock wiggle. If you don't let it wiggle, you can't manage them pivots. Now, could you do a hybrid approach? Of course you could. You could do pivots plus bar by bar or bar by bar. You could. I don't want to get into that today. But in this case, the stock goes up one, two, three, four bars, and you still can't touch it. You have to wait. The red bar comes in. The green bar comes in. And then it breaks out here. When it finally breaks this area, see it right there? When it finally breaks that area, now you can raise your stop. So you got to wait a good, what, we got in at 11 o'clock and this thing. You got to wait almost an hour and a half on a five minute chart to raise your stop even one time. Now, again, you could use a hybrid. You could sell half at 2R and then pivot the trail the back half, up to you. Raises, comes up. Now remember, you're up $1.50 right now, $1.50. 
on a 16 cent stop, you're up like nine to one and you only have about two to one protected. So you're up nine to one, but you only have two to one protected. How would you feel if you were up nine to one and it came all the way back down and you only made two to one? I'm asking you this question because if you said I would be sick to my stomach, then pivot management is probably not for you. It's a big give and take. You have huge gains, but there are times you give back pretty significant gains as well. Okay, so then it pivots. You can't raise your stop until over here, till it tests that prior high. So again, it pulls back, consolidates, goes higher right here, right about there. Then you can raise your stop. Moves up, pulls back, bounces. Note, we're not raising our stop loss yet. See it right here? We're not raising it. Why? It didn't get 90% back to the prior high. It didn't. So some of you would have raised your stop loss right here and you would have been stopped out. Nope, it didn't get back 90% to the prior high. So you don't raise your stop, it stays down here. Then it bounces finally right here, finally gets back to the prior high right here. Now you raise your stop, okay? Now over here is where you would have stopped out. Why? This pivot went 90% here and then it would have stopped you right there. You would have gotten out at about 88 bucks. <whistles> Pretty good. Okay, you would have made 12 and a half to one on this thing. That's pretty darn good for a $240 risk. So I got to wrap this up, guys. Like I said, it's my daughter's birthday today. Um, so got to go do some of that stuff. I hope that you guys took something from this lecture. And I'm not joking when I'm talking about these kind of emails, man. This is serious stuff. I want you to think, how is this person feeling right now? $170,000 of life savings is gone. It's disappeared. I want you to remember this lecture because it's real and this happens to real people and they're getting advice from bad people. Oh, hold, just expect, don't expect to make gains. Just lower your losses. No, you're going to increase your losses. Okay. So really think about that stuff. Okay. So I hope you enjoyed this week's lecture on money management, a little bit of trade management, understanding what a pivot is. I will see you guys again next week. Take care guys. To get more great educational content, subscribe to the Live Traders YouTube channel. This way you'll get email alerts every time I upload a new video.